Well, after President Joe Biden, the Prime Minister of uh, UK, Rishi Sunak, is set to embark on a visit to Israel. Later today, he will be meeting top leaders to discuss the country's ongoing war with Hamas and also express solidarity. An important uh, development there because this comes just a day after US President Joe Biden also visited uh, uh, Israel. In fact, his uh, meetings with several Middle Eastern leaders, including the President of Palestinian Authority, was cancelled uh, amid uh, that hospital attack, that horrific uh, attack on a Gaza hospital that really shocked world leaders. And now uh, Rishi Sunak uh, is uh, headed uh, uh, to Israel. In fact, this also comes amid claims and counterclaims as far as that uh, hospital attack is concerned. But first, let's listen in to what Rishi Sunak had to say. I know the whole house will have been shocked by the scenes at uh, Al Ali Hospital. Any loss of innocent life is a dreadful tragedy. And everyone will be thinking both of those who have lost their lives and the families that they leave behind. We should not rush to judgment before we have all the facts on this awful situation. I can tell the Honourable Gentleman our intelligence services have been rapidly analysing the evidence to independently establish the facts. Uh, we are not in a position at this point to say more than that, but I can tell him we are working at pace, but also cooperating and collaborating with our allies on this issue as we look to get to the bottom of the situation and we will also continue all our efforts to get humanitarian aid into the region. And Mohammad Ghazali is with us uh, live on the broadcast now. So Ghazali, you know, this is interesting now that just a day after President Biden's visit, Rishi Sunak is also um, going to Israel, of course, uh, in a bid to express solidarity. What does it mean in the larger geopolitical context? Break it down for us. Okay, as far as Israel is concerned, Israel is one of the most trusted ally for the West in the Middle East. It is the best and trusted ally for US and we know what sort of relations Israel enjoys with US. You must have heard many spokespersons and the previous presidents of the United States using the term ironclad support to Israel and we shared, uh, we have shared values with Israel. So no matter what Israel's position is there in the Middle East, it is certainly one of the key partners for all the Western countries. And we have seen it that before Biden's visit, it was German's chancellor who was there in Israel to show his solidarity with Israel. Now Rishi Sunak announced in UK that in a couple of days he'll visit and he's scheduled to visit today. And we're also expecting some other top Western leaders to come and show solidarity with Israel in this war against Hamas. But what would be the fallout? The fallout would be that even in Arab countries, people have taken to streets and we know that in the last couple of years, the normalization between Arab states and Israel was in full swing. Abraham Accords was signed in 2020 when Mr. Trump was the president of the United States and when Mr. Biden took over, he only extended the policy by making efforts to bring Israel and Saudi Arabia together. But this entire Israel Hamas war is now showing the fault lines of Abraham Accords because the Arab public, uh, they have taken to streets protesting against US, against UK, against France and in those countries where Israel has an embassy, even their protests are going on. And there was a attack on the uh, on security infrastructure of United States in Iraq through drone, though United States averted it. So that shows that how public anger is on the rise in Arab states, despite all the talks of normalization, and not only Israel or the United States, which is engaged in this war as of now, are facing the brunt, but also other Western states who have no connection with the war will also be dragged into it. So this is a collective public anger against the West, mm. which has now taken on the streets. And Mr. Joe Biden, who will be uh, running for the elections next year, he was seen as a man of stability because that is what he expected when he visited Ukraine in Ukraine when the war was on between Ukraine and Russia. Even at that time, he was seen as somebody who is looking for stability, who is looking for peace. But under his tenure, two regions or two wars have broke out, one in the West and one in the Middle East. And that is exactly why he was here, though his statements looked more supportive towards Israel. But at the end of the day, he also announced monetary aid for the Gaza or the West Bank residents. But will it be enough to sort of bridge the gap between West and the Middle East? That looks very unlikely.